All right, guys, here's Wally, and he's progressing really fast. I'm going to just show you some general stuff, and then I'm going to zoom in and, and look at a bunch of details, but uh, we'll start right with the punchline. Um, if I move the end effector around, it, and, and I'm actually pushing down a little bit while I do this. Um, kind of hard to film and do this at the same time. It is so buttery smooth. I, I really have never felt um, XY motion like this. Um, I've been working a little bit at Cubed and uh, their printers are excellent and they have very smooth XY uh, stages and uh, linear bearings and rails have nothing on this. This is, this is phenomenal. Um, and as far as inertia goes, the inertia is um, is very very low. All of these uh, all these orange pieces are 20% infill, uh, very very lightweight, lighter than the bolts uh, themselves, bolts and the bearings. So I can't really, I mean, I could optimize the arms, and I could, I, I don't need them quite as thick as they are, but um, it's definitely not hurting me. Um, so, anyways, that is the basics. Um, and you can see down here there are uh, brackets and there'll be some arms coming out of that for the uh, in, for the, the Z-bed. And um, so that, that's going to be the basic form factor. Uh, there'll be motors up here uh, with pulleys um, that will um, drive bigger pulleys here. I'm looking at about a 1 to 7 mechanical advantage or 7 to 1. And, and so I'm actually driving the angle of the elbows, which is going to keep me from having singularities uh, whenever this gets in a straight line. So that would be super nice. Um, and uh, there'll be another motor here with a string down to the bed. Uh, inverse kinematics is bad all the way around, um, but it's definitely uh, doable. And as you can see, this is about the simplest bot ever made, I think. You know, very, very few printed pieces and just one solid backboard. And uh, that's, you know, I have a few more brackets and a few more arms. All these arms are the same. Um, very, very small part count, very little plastic. Um, I spent one day printing all of this, um, so um, it should be no problem. I think, you know, if I had my printer running nonstop for full 24 hours, I could easily do this. Um, all right, so let, let me just go go through all the little details. Uh, I put a handhold and even routed it out and made it nice and smooth so it feels good on your hand. Um, I have all, all these brackets are all together. Uh, the motor bracket and the arm bracket are all, all together, so you don't have to worry about alignment between those two. Uh, and you can see that uh, the... the, the um, the socket head screws are countersunk on the back, so I can I can you know clamp this flush to the wall. That's not my normal plan, but at least it's nice and smooth on the back. And then there's nut traps on all the brackets, so you don't have to use a wrench on the other side. Um, I added Wally onto the inside of the the um, all the arms for branding purposes, so that's super cool. Um, and uh, you can see here that it's kind of hard to see in the video but there is a, uh, a hole here and that's where a um, a Hall effect sensor is going to go and you can't really see it but there's a underneath this there's a tube that goes through this and then it comes out both sides so you can route the uh, wires for it inside the arm you know to that side or that side depending on what you want to do um, and then the pulley is going to sit on top of here I haven't I haven't made them yet but I just have to take this nut off flip it over the this the the, um, the bolt and then put it back on and uh, I will have a pulley and I'll put another uh, small drive pulley here and they will you know be connected up with um, 80 pound test line on this uh, drive pulley um, it's going to uh, come down and I'm going to have it insert into the the tip of the button head cap screw so I keep the axis aligned there'll be uh, spiral grooves on it with a, uh, a, a hole or something in the middle where you can positively tie the string so there'll be no slippage don't rely on friction and then this string will go out to the pulley go around um, 
each end will go around a few times and terminate. One will be just tied and one will be with a string so I can keep good tension on this at all times. Um, the spring will provide more force than the motors can provide so the, there's no chance that the, uh, the, uh, str the motors can cause the uh, string to go slack and overpower the spring. So, so that'll be a pretty easy design challenge. Um, I haven't bought the springs, and, um, but I'll get those soon. Uh, let's see. Um, on Dennis's uh, suggestion, I, um, I did a uh, staggered hole pattern for the uh, double lamina compliant joint. And, and so and, uh, I still need to restring this, but it's working pretty dang good. Um, what's the problem right now is I put these, uh, I put a, a, a groove in here and I put, uh, and then some holes for some um, some screws and so I tied the string on there and just and tightened those down to tension it but um, that's not quite good enough. I'm going to um, I'm going to make a plastic piece which is what I actually intended in the first. I was just testing this out to see if it worked but I'm going to make a plastic piece and, and the bolts will press on that plastic piece and will tension all the strings at once and then there's since everything's the same there is a matching um, groove on this side and so I can I can tension it and I can I can loosen this up and and change the angle of this as needed and then tighten it back down and um, should be really really pretty easy to make sure uh, to you know to uh, maintain this um, so I think that's about all. Oh, oh, um, the end effector, you guys probably are wondering where that would go. Um, the end effector is actually going to mount um, between these two holes tangent to this. Um, and you may wonder, hey, are the arms ever going to hit it? And the arms will get close, and, but nowhere in its uh, range of motion will the, uh, the arms ever hit the end effector. So it's always, it's always safe. So, um, and I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried about the heat in the um, in the string, but I, I actually put the uh, the hot end up there, and, um, and and there's there's just a little bit of danger zone where there's some overlap where the hot end is pretty hot next to the string. So I might just uh, be able to solve it with a little bit of insulation, or I'm just going to run it actually without doing anything and see how long it takes before I get any problems. And if it's if it's a very long time, then why fix the problem? All right. Uh, future plans um, is um, well. I'm planning on making a rack with tools uh, between the two motors here, and it will be a, um, a real simple pickup and and, uh, and let go mechanism. I'm gonna get some really strong rare earth magnets and. Um, I'm going to size them so the motors are just strong enough to pull against them. So, um, so it'll start out empty and it'll go up to a tool and it will just, um, it'll, it'll just go right up to it and the magnets will engage. There might be some kind of conical alignment system or something like that. And then it'll just pull the part back out and there might be some Bowden tube or uh, what kind of electronics. It could be a paper cutter or a laser diode. It could be anything. Um, you pull it out. You can do your work. And um, then when you're ready to get rid of it, you just go right back to where it docked. And then this is where you don't, you just go to the side and you shear off those magnets. And uh, once you shear off the magnets, then you can pull away and you um, are toolless and you can go pick up another one. Um, I'm not going to mess with that until I prove um, Wally's, um, Wally's concept, but um, that is, you know, that's going to be one of the coolest things about this robot. Um, all right. Um, Oh, zeroing. Zeroing is super important. So I told you how there's going to be a Hall effect sensor here. Um, well, the magnet's going to be in a uh, in the pulley, embedded in it, and I'll have a hole where I can push it up and down so I can adjust it so I can get the magnetic field just right for the uh, sensor. And um, and I'm going to make it where the uh, they line up the magnet and the Hall effect sensor whenever this is at 180 degrees. And I'm going to try one of two different um, zeroing techniques. Um, technique one will be to um, to start with one axis, and so I'm, I'm actuating this this angle right here. So I would 
I would make that go until the, uh, the Hall effect sensor went high. And then I would go past it until it went low, back to whenever it's high. Remember those two places whenever the sensor went high. Split the difference, and I should have pretty dang close to 180 degrees, if not 180. Um, and then I would do the same thing with the other axis of high, and then low, high, remember, and then and split the difference. And I should get to this, um, this position right here where they're straight out. And so I should, and, and I would know exactly where that is in, in two dimensions, and, and then I could drive from there. So that's option one, and option two, which may be more practical, but requires uh, more calibration for the user, is um, I would go until it goes high, and then, um, and then I would calibrate how much more you have to go past that point to get straight. You know, you have to measure that and put it in firmware, and you do that on each side. And so that would be a little more straightforward um, homing um, as far as once you run it later, but, you know, you push a button, it does it, so who cares. Um, so um, down here on the V, uh, I don't have any arms, but um, they're, they're the same arms as these with the Hall Effect sensor embedded in them. And the bracket for the Z-bed, I will put a magnet in that, and so it'll be the exact same deal. And I'll be able to do the splitting so I can get the straight out 90 degree configuration, or I can do the same thing and calibrate it in firmware. I'm really, really crossing my fingers on the, uh, the split and the difference uh, technique. Um, but that is yet to be proven, so um, anything to make this robot simpler, faster, cheaper, easier to operate. All right. Um, let's come over to the board here. I uh, put this, you know, up to the board. Um, but you're looking at the XY envelope, and down here is the board. And uh, this is it's, it's how, as far as you can get away from the board. And so you, it makes this arrowhead shape. And you, I've dotted in the uh, build, uh, build platform. So you can see that it has room to go up and down. It's kind of an unusual shape. Um, so um, I actually could probably make a bigger platform and rotate it 45 degrees. I'll have to play around with that a little bit. But um, this is a, a pretty decent platform size, and this would be very scalable. Well, um, I hope you're as excited about uh, Wally as I am. It's looking like um, Wally is going to be, you know, a really sweet robot. Um, oh, before I, before I get off, um, I have to talk about uh, how this would stand up and where the electronics would go. And um, I'm going to make, I'm going to get a micro ATX uh, power supply and, uh, and I'm going to use, you know, any kind of controller. And that will be able to, to mount back here between the, uh, these arm uh, mounts and it should be pretty compact. And if I mount them low enough, the bed should come down and uh, not interfere with them. And I can actually mount the controller up on the bottom of the bed if I need to in the, the ATX controller, if I micro ATX power supply. Um, so that's another option. So I'm either going to mount it down here or underneath the bed. And it, I might actually need to have more weight on the bed. So, um, so there's no doubt that the uh, bed's in the right position as I let out strain. Um, and I'm, I'm planning uh, some kind of slats here and uh, some bolted standoffs where um, they can, they can uh, rotate out and, and, and be little legs. And whenever they're not in use, you can fold them up and they'll run right along the side of the robot. So completely out of the way, really compact, but, but we'll come out and we'll hold it from far enough away. And that is it. Um, Stay tuned. I'm going to have to take the next uh, two weeks off or so, so um, Wally's development will, uh, will halt, but I am counting the days until I can slap some steppers on here and see what this thing can do. All right.